Did you get COVID one or more times to only later be diagnosed with something new? Perhaps depression or anxiety, perhaps an autoimmune disease, and quite possibly something gut-related, diarrhea, constipation, SIBO, etc. Welcome to this update on COVID and the microbiome. What we have come to call long COVID is dismissed by many, but I'm here to tell you that it is very plausible that COVID drove significant change in your microbiome and thus change in your health. This could be particularly true if you were also given antibiotics for whatever reason during your COVID infection. In my initial COVID video, which I launched in April of 2024, I talked about how a number of illnesses such as the flu, pneumonia, respiratory tract infections, and yes, COVID, have all been repeatedly shown to significantly alter the microbiome for the worse. And they have the same result. The same opportunistic pathogens are increased and the same health promoters are decreased. So let's take a look at more recently published information, which only serves to bolster everything I stated in my initial COVID video. Let's look at some of those bad and good bugs altered from COVID. From this newly published 2024 paper, we see here healthy controls versus those with COVID. I know there's a lot going on here, but the most obvious thing to jump out at you is that big increase in yellow for COVID, which is basically non-existent in healthy controls. That yellow is the classic opportunistic pathogen, E. facium. Viruses that affect the gut, like COVID, change the environment to one that favors the bad guys and reduces the good guys, like Roseburia, which is also significantly different between these two groups. These researchers also looked at the post-COVID microbiome one and three months post-acute COVID, as shown here in C and D. As these patients recovered from COVID, their microbiomes began to snap back to normal where the levels of bad actors like E. facium reduced, and where the levels of good guys like E. rectale, F. prosecii, and Roseburia increased. Which led them to say, quote, our results further support this shift in the bacterial community, indicating that COVID severity is associated with an increase in opportunistic pathogens, including Enterococcus, and a decrease in the relative abundance of butyrate-producing genera which is reverted during the recovery from the infection. But not everybody snaps back into form following COVID, and if they do, some take longer than others. All information you can see in my COVID video from last April. Here we see the microbiome differences between long COVID and those who recovered. The good guys that get reduced tend to be the health-promoting, beer-producing bacteria. And again, if antibiotics were administered, then they too tend to kill off those butyrate-producing bacteria, a bad one-two punch. If you're familiar with my videos, I'm always talking about the many benefits of butyrate. And here, we have a quote from these authors which states, Butyrate has a crucial role in preventing the overgrowth of opportunistic pathogens, sustaining the integrity of the intestinal mucosal barrier, stimulating the adaptive immune response, bolstering antiviral immunity, and even regulating the expression of angiotensin-converting enzyme 2, crucial for the SARS COVID entry into the cell. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recommend to friends and family. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, hit the super thanks below. When we look at my complete meta-analysis of human fecal microbiome studies in healthy controls versus COVID, we get this chart here from my April video. Green indicates significantly higher in the healthy controls, while orange significantly higher in COVID, a bad thing. Here we see the genus Enterococcus, which is where E. facium comes from. So the previous paper further reinforces the data I had already collected for COVID's negative effects on the microbiome. And what were some of those health-promoting butyrate-producing names we mentioned earlier? E. rectale, F. prosecii, and Roseburia. So this new study is very consistent with the previously published ones, reinforcing principles for not only COVID, but for many other diseases and conditions as these patterns hold true across the board. When we look at this new COVID severity study, we see much the same. I know this figure is impossible to read, but you can get it and read it on your own, or read the text to the left. As COVID severity increased, 
classic oxygen, pH, antibiotic sensitive, beauty producing, health promoters were significantly decreased. Names I mention all the time. These authors state, quote, these genera are known to produce short chain fatty acids, which are immunomodulatory molecules that exert anti-inflammatory effects on the host, taming the side effects of the immune response. From these findings, which ones line up with my previous chart for the microbiome and COVID severity? These six. Again, consistency in the microbiome data. So now that we looked at healthy controls versus COVID and COVID severity, let's look at long COVID. Here they are naming long COVID what they call PASC, post-acute sequelae of COVID. So when you see PSC in these tables and figures, think long COVID. They state that from 5 to 30% of COVID survivors suffer from post-COVID symptoms, hence this study. They looked at markers of gut permeability, aka leaky gut, and inflammation as it related to long COVID status. And what did they find? Well, long COVID was significantly associated with things you'd guess like smoking and obesity, but also things associated with the microbiome, such as zonulin. And a very interesting finding, oxidized LDL. So let's talk about a very important principle. If you're familiar with my videos, you know the name zonulin by now. It plays a role in creating gut permeability. The more zonulin, the more permeability. See my video on gut permeability for more information. So here in these two figures, we see that those without COVID had the least amount of zonulin, while those with COVID, but not long COVID, had more zonulin. And those with long COVID had the most zonulin, aka gut permeability. So what does this imply? Gut permeability is the link between the inflammation within the gut and how inflammation-inducing compounds can escape the gut to cause all sorts of problems in the rest of your body. This is how things like autoimmune disease, depression, and anxiety are connected to your gut. Now here, in the context of oxidized LDL, the principles are the same. These pro-inflammatory compounds can drive inflammation and oxidation in the vasculature as well. For much more information, see my video entitled cardiovascular disease and the microbiome, oxidation and inflammation. And here in table two, we see a significant connection between CRP, which is a nonspecific marker for systemic inflammation, zonulin, which we just covered, and another marker for gut permeability I often mention, LBP, which is LPS binding protein. With these three new papers, you can see how COVID drives an inflammatory environment in the gut by increasing classic bad actors and decreasing health-promoting bacteria, which then goes on to drive gut permeability and leakage of pro-inflammatory compounds into the rest of the body, ultimately impacting things like mental health, vascular health, and much more. So now you can see how if you are a long COVID survivor and your microbiome continues to be dysbiotic, then how you can still suffer from whatever malady you have a propensity to suffer from. Therefore, instead of continuing to spin your wheels with practitioners who are less than talented, maybe it's time to work with someone who understands the root cause and knows how to tackle it. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, somewhere around here, you can go to my website where you can schedule a consultation with me. You can also view the protocols. And here, you can watch the next video.